Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. Take that for a text this morning, and then we'll discuss. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. Shall we read together? Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms, and of laying on of hands, and of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. May the Lord add blessings to the reading of his word. Let's be seated, please. We give God thanks for his goodness and his mercies that is ever fresh, ever new, each day in our lives. We are grateful because that we know that it is not him that will it, it is not him that run it, it is the Lord that shows mercy. And it is, it is a prerogative of God as Almighty. He is the Lord, that's Adonai, the sovereign God, the Lord, the sovereign ruler, the master of everything. So he does according to his good will, according to, according to what gives him pleasure. And therefore, it, has, it is his pleasure that we should be a partaker of the day of a new week. We appreciate him for making us vessels of his mercy. And we are asking also by his grace that his mercies that has brought us into this new week, we carry us through this week in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We also are happy to see you again. We, we thank God for preserving our lives and we are welcoming everyone to fellowship this morning. Especially, you see, the scripture said, God is the savior of all men, especially of those that believe. Yes, uh, and we, we, we are happy to see everyone today. And we ask the blessings of the Lord upon us all, especially, especially those who are early to his presence. Blessed be the name of the Lord. <laughs> uh, uh, we've been hearing certain things since now. We hear, we chop better food since. I bless God for our assembly. The Lord has not left us in darkness. He has not left us in darkness. See, we are living in a time where lights are going out. The scripture said, and they realize, they say, our lamps have gone out. These are churches. But by his own mercies, he continues to foil our light. He continues to cause our light to shine brighter and brighter. May the light of God not cease from our lives. In Jesus Christ's name. All right. Um, this morning, by God's grace, we uh, understanding the serpent seed. We'll be looking at that today. It's just an introduction just an introduction uh, certain things back to us peter speaking second peter began to admonish and says and though you know these things that but that you should be established in the present truth so he said wherefore i will not be negligent to put you in remembrance of these things and he said also that so that after his departing, that they will continue to have these things in their remembrance. So, maybe some of us have the understanding of these things, the serpent seed and all, but by God's grace, we are trying to bring these things back to our remembrance. And also, we know that many people worship with us here and fellowship with us here without having an understanding of what things we stand on without having an understanding of what has brought us together in this place so it's like uh, this is just one church oh this is one church that is in the end time so when pastor is announcing this is an end time message believing church they might not really be able to relate with it uh, maybe it just means a church that is in the end time or something like that but there's what we know there's what we believe and we hope that the Lord will give us a better understanding of these things in Jesus Christ's name. Today, 
it will just be an introduction. And that's uh, uh, why we took this text in Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 to 2. And uh, he began by saying, therefore, living. Now, when he's starting off like this, therefore, then he has been making an argument. He has been making a discussion. He has been trying to push something. Now, what he has been trying to push, really, uh, now he's, he's coming to this point where he's giving this as an admonition. That is, therefore, let us do like this. But he's trying to now give this as an admonition on the strength of certain things that he was saying in the previous chapter. Praise God. And now he was, but what he was really saying, he was trying to build up about perfection perfection so how the church is supposed to run or operate so just go back a little bit as we are giving this subject an introduction we'll go back a little bit hebrews chapter 5 let's take it up from verse um from verse 8 hebrews chapter 5 let's take it up from verse 8 hebrews chapter 5 from verse 8 yes sir Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Now, okay, the next verse, please. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto them that obey him. Just hold on, sir. Um, now, though he were his son, he said, yet he learned, learned obedience. obedience by the things which he suffered. Yes. Now, see, sometimes the church is just satisfied with the fact that I have become a son of God. The church, uh, now you say, you say, just try, it's like the struggle, just try and try to be born again. So, once the person becomes a son of God, it don't make him. It, it is, it is, a, it, it, he has accomplished, he has arrived. But now, that is not the position. So, Christ already, already, he was a son. Already. But though he was a son, he needed to learn certain things. Now, of course, if you have not the spirit of Christ, you are none of his. Scripture said. So, we become sons by the spirit of the son. But now, though we are sons, then... It don't end there. Now we need to learn. Now this learning is unto perfection. That's what's driving at here now. He said, though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. He needed to learn so that he would be accepted as a son. He needed to learn so that he would be approved as a son. He needed to learn so that he would be adopted now we are driving into the principles of adoption. In the Old Testament there, we are not teaching on adoption, but just driving it here now. In the Old Testament there, a man, it was not enough for a son to be born unto a man. But when that son, when that child is born, he puts that child under tutors until the time appointed, then he adopts his son. That is, that man adopts his sons from among sons. Praise God. In the civilized concept of adoption, somebody goes to adopt a son from people that are not his children. Go to baby, uh, fatherless baby home, a motherless baby home, and stuff like that, orphanage, and look and look and say, "Let me adopt this one." They are not his children. Now, in the in on this side from where we operate, God adopts. A, a man adopts a son from among his sons. So that it is beyond, <laughs> I am a child of God. Yes. But we are pushing onto something. It is the adoption. Yes, where Pastor Dan has been teaching. Those for the rapture. Those for the rapture. And he said the reference to the living sense. Those for the rapture. And he said, I'm not talking of those for the kingdom. See, because that there is adoption. Praise God. Now, yet lend he obedience by the things which he suffered. Okay? 
Now, he said, the next verse began to say, uh, and being made perfect, perfect, he became the author of, of eternal, eternal salvation. salvation to them that will be him. Yes. Now, we want to drive the understanding of perfection. We're trying to ask that day and say, what is perfection? Now, you begin to have a better understanding of perfection in God's view. Now, Christ was the perfect sacrifice. Christ was born sinless. Praise God. Christ was without fault. So, he was perfect. But here, the scripture is saying, being made perfect. Now, here, the scripture is saying, Christ was made perfect. <laughs> Praise God. So that you understand that the perfection is driving here is not about faults and sins. It's not about mistakes and you say, when you say this man is a perfect man, then it's like the man not the, not, not the make mistake. No, no, that's not the drive of perfection here. Because Christ was born faultless. But he's trying to say that this son learned certain things until he came to a point where he was made perfect. Now, he's standing in our, in our shoes now because we have to occupy that same thing. So that by the blood of Christ, we are made perfect. That is, by the blood of Christ, we are made sinless. That one is done. That one is, not, that one is done. But now, we need to be made perfect. Do we understand what I'm trying to say? So there's a drive towards perfection. Perfection, therefore, is not that uh, the person doesn't make mistakes. Uh, this person, no. It is something, it is something that he's trying to talk about. So we're trying to say that perfection as it is driven here, is talking about maturity. It's talking about spiritual maturity. So that it is, it is coming to spiritual maturity demanded by God in the knowledge and understanding of God. Which allows a person to, to be able to receive certain knowledge from God as he reveals them. Coming to spiritual maturity, growing into spiritual maturity in the knowledge and understanding of God. So that the person is able to now receive certain revelations, knowledge, as it is being revealed by God to the day. This is what perfection is. We'll be able to hit that point. Praise God. Now... Let me say something about babies. You see, babies. Babies are born as babies, but they need to grow. Babies don't understand the idea behind will. Behind their father's will. Behind their parents' will. No, babies don't understand that one. It's you that know that one. The only thing a baby understands is what he wants. It is his own will. So, until... Until the child gets his will, he continues to cry, 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 change jump for everybody when they the house. Until he has his way. That is a baby. <laughs> a prophet called me one night inside the night. He asked me. I, I picked the phone up immediately and said, "Are you not asleep?" And I said, "No, baby, they cry." So he said, "Baby, they cry enough to sleep." <laughs> I said, "No." I said, "When?" <laughs> <laughs> I say, I say, no, I say, it's not possible now. He said, ah, that means you be, you are very good, uh, you are very good uh, father. I said, no, it's not about being a good father. I say, it's not possible. How do you want to sleep? I say, except say I don't want to sleep for this room. Maybe I'll go sleep for another place. So he said, ah. So then one day he heard baby crying and he said, hey, no wonder you're not asleep that night. <laughs> now, the child does not understand whether you want to sleep. No, you have to, now, 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 until you settle me, nobody has rest. This is a baby. But you see, it does not remain like that forever. Because as the child is growing, it begins to understand the idea of my father's will. That my father, this is what my father wants. So, it has increased now in faith. So, whereas it began by, my father can give me 
all things. Therefore, he should give me everything. A anything I want. I, I know he can give me. Therefore, he must give me. That's how it starts. But by the time it begins to grow, it reaches a higher level of faith where it's no more it should give me all things because he can give me all things. It's now to the point where is it his will that I should have this thing? It has grown. So it's now understanding will so that it's not now just pushing for his own will, but it's looking for the will of the Father. Praise God. Now this is what Christ also became. This is an aspect or a coloration of maturity, spiritual maturity. When a person begins to is growing in that maturity, he grows up and begins to understand the will. So that Christ grew to this point. He did not want to die. Praise God. He did not want to die. <laughs> uh, uh, he said, he said, he said, Father, he said, this cup, let this cup pass. Let this cup pass. He prayed, he let this cup pass. Let me not drink this cup. Then he came back and began to say, if, if this cup, he said, if this cup will not pass without me drinking it, he said then, let your will be done. Then he went back again and prayed and said, Father, not my will, but let your will be done. So in his own will, in his own calculation, he shouldn't have died. But now he has come to understand that it is the Father's will that he should die. And he was submitting under that will. Praise God. Now, now Apostle Paul, let's use the Apostle Paul also for an example. Apostle Paul said, I besought the Lord three times that, that this thing should be taken away from me. This messenger of, this, of Satan that buffets me in the flesh. I besought him three times that it should be taken on me. He said, and the answer of the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for you. Did you hear him again? Now, Apostle Paul was going up to, um, to, to Jerusalem. Now, the 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 the, the by the word of knowledge. Now those prophets began to give him message. Say, if you go there, you will die. If you go there, they will put you in bonds. Who loves to be a bond man? If you go there, you will be brought under bonds. But now, now, now. They told him and the man said, even so, I go. Because he had come to understand that it is the father's will. That he should testify of him in Jerusalem. Because he said, it will make him to testify. In, he said, he will read this where the Lord revealed to him. So he knew that it was God's will to testify in that place. Then he was not going to begin to resist the will. So that he will have some peace. So that he will have some freedom. His freedom. Praise God. But he began to submit himself to that thing. Now, you will not hear anywhere where the Apostle Paul began to fire prayers so that they will release him from prison. You know, he was in prison for a long time. From here, they will transfer him to here with other prisoners. From here, they will transfer him to here, from here to here. Prison. Most of these letters were written from prison. Yeah. Now, they will be transferring him. Now, did Apostle Paul not know that God can release somebody from prison? God released Peter. Peter, they arrested him. No, it was not the Father's will that Peter would be in prison and be testifying from prison. No, 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 no. That was the stuff for Peter. He wanted Peter to be testifying inside that place. In that temple. Now, they arrested the man. Then the angel of the Lord came when he was sleeping and woke him up took him, the gates, he was passing through gates that were locked, took him out to the middle of the city and said, yeah, go and continue preaching. Now, could they, that same father of Peter, 
that same master of Peter, is he not the same master of Paul? So, could he not release Paul too? Could Paul not say, ah, release me, let me go and preach for you. And she released Peter. Because she released Peter, release me. Nowhere was firing prayers. All of his letters, you see somebody that understands the will. So he said, I have been made a prisoner for Jesus Christ. Therefore, I apprehend the purpose for which I am apprehended. It is a mature person that is talking. Praise God. Understanding the will. Now, as Christians, as children, many times we, 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 we behave like babies. I want only just to be crying, 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 until God will not rest until you have your will. Have you found out whether that is his will for you? I want to marry. If I don't marry, you will not rest. Have you found out whether that is his will for you? That I want to be rich. I want to have... I want, because you gave this one this thing, you too, you must give me. Because uh, 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 this one won't get him. He can get two heads. Not be the same God, not be the same God, not me, they serve. Eh, then we measure without an understanding of what God's will is for our lives. You know, um, I, they are, I've said this before. We're going to, the, that agent, my friend was taking me around. We're looking for, uh, we're looking for a house to rent. And then he began to show me the land that were in markets. Because now their area is their expertise. So he said, this one, this land, as you see and here, so, it they market to. He told me the price. and said, Kai, they said, if you just buy this land now, leave them, maybe just leave them. In the next, in the next like five, ten years, ten years, this thing now go be cut me here. The money will go there here. Then, then you, if you just decide to they build your own, build your own house, you know, say, as you don't, you know. So when he finished talking, I now began to ask him. When I they tell you, say, Jesus go soon come, you feel say I know me now. I, I say, you feel say the joke. So, you, you expect me, knowing that Jesus is coming, to be wasting money on land. <laughs> I say, it's not like that. Now, we got talking, and I began to ask him, is there a sin if I go to heaven from landlord's house? Can I not go to heaven from a landlord's house? It's not sin. Then when we spoke to a point, he began to say, Kai, not true, Shao. This is not true. But, but, but how you tell no say Jesus will soon come? <laughs> because they don't they talk him since. I said, eh, not be waiting with it. Now, who they come, tell you, say, when you begin to see these things, lift up your heads. Your redemption, threat nine. And we are seeing it. But you don't want to believe he is coming. So I told him, I said, see, I am content with going to heaven from a landlord's house. I'm not looking for to go anywhere and say, I must uh, <laughs> see my mate now. My mate, my, my mate uh, living in Guarimpa. Uh, and, um, me too, me too, me too. I have a house. I have you seen my house? Eh? Come and meet me in my landlord's house. <laughs> I said, Bet, if it is his will that I should have a house, he will give me a house. That one is not me to fight for that one. That one is up to him. But I am content with what level he has brought me to. If he wants to give me a land, then you give me a land now. Then we saw the house. Then the ministers, pastor, and some of they came over to pray for the house. And when they prayed, a message began to come through those. Not only one person now, one spoke, the other one confirmed it and said, The Lord does not permit you to leave this house to another house. He's telling you that you will leave this house. To your own house. He does not permit you to rent again. Now me do am. Now me pray am. And so, when, if I now begin to I want land somewhere, then me I understand his will. Then maybe somebody now that if I come now and say, hey, the Lord has given me house, then another person now will say, he has bought house. Lord, though, maybe it's, maybe it's because he's shouting very much on Friday. My father, my father. Okay. Understand the will of God and submit your own will under that thing. This is maturity. Praise God. 
Now, now, it's the same thing, the apostle, please, let's continue that reading. It's what he was trying to get the church to understand. This, this Jewish church. Verse 10. Yes, I think that's 11 or something, 10. God of God and high priest. Sorry, I'm not hearing. I'm not hearing. Uh, please, uh, let's uh, raise the mic. Okay. God of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Okay. And so he said, being made perfect. That is, being made mature by learning. He became the author of eternal salvation to them that obey him. What is the purpose? That they should be mature like he. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay. Then called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Which we too, we are called of God, priests after the same order. Yes. Okay. Now. Of, of whom we have many things to say. Of whom we have many things to say. And had, and had to be uttered. And had to be uttered. Seeing ye are dull, dull of hearing. Now, seeing you are dull of hearing. Now, the apostle is talking to this Jewish church. Seeing you are dull of, of hearing. hearing. That is hearing there is understanding mm -hmm. so so he's saying that okay verse 12 verse 12 for when for when for the time you ought to be teachers okay ye have need that one teach you again which be the first principle of the oracle of god okay and for, are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat and not strong meat okay now, for when the time comes that you ought to be teachers, you have needs that will begin to teach you again. Now, what is he saying? He's saying that the church was expected to grow and come to maturity. But there's a problem that is hindering it. They are dull of hearing. They are not understanding. They are not understanding. Now, this person that in the, in the year... As the words they come in the here, but you know they understand. How do you begin to tell him things that are hard to be uttered? How do you begin to tell him difficult things when he's already dull of hearing? It's why that's his complaint here now. Because that he's saying that the church, this Jewish church, they're supposed to have grown to the point where they are teachers. But now they say they, they, are, they are needing. They are needing that somebody will be teaching them again the first principles of the doctrine, right? The first, the first principles. The first principles of the oracles of God. Now, the first principles of the oracles of, of God. God. Oracles, they are sayings. The first principles of the oracles sayings of, of, God. Of, 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 of God. Now, now, let's read something in Matthew. Just hold this. I will read Matthew 13. Matthew 13 verse 15 Matthew 13 verse 15 the same thing that the Lord Jesus was telling them he said for these people's heart is wax gross and their ears are dull of hearing their eyes they have closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their hearts and should be converted and i should heal them now he's saying the same thing that these people's ears are dull of hearing i'm bringing this up now because this is the point where the church is today the gentile church today is standing in this place but this is the point from where God has delivered us and cut us out. But sometimes we perceive dullness in hearing. Not because we are dull of hearing, but because we will not give ourselves to hearing. We will not give ourselves to understanding. That's why I say sometimes it's like we are satisfied that we are sons. But we forget that though he were a son, yet he needed to learn to perfection. So that he will be accepted truly as a son. So sometimes we relax. I, 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 don't, I, I don't receive Holy Spirit. I, I don't confess Lord and Savior. You do, do, 
but not applying of oneself. Apostle Paul said, until I come, he said, give attendance to reading, to exhortations, to doctrine, until I come. He said, these saints, he said, be, be, be studious on them and meditate upon them so that thou mayest save thyself and them that hear thee. But we will not put, we are, sometimes we become too busy to learn. Too busy to give ourselves to understanding. And we we'll bless ourselves in our hearts that we are sons. No. That kind of sonship is not accepted by God. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 1 to 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 1 to 9, okay? 1 Corinthians 3, verse 1 to 9. Let's see. Yes, sir. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I could not speak unto you as spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Listen. Babes, you see that state is carnality. And in case you don't know, the carnal man cannot please God. Is that Bible? In that state of baby, though it's a son, it's a carnal thing. And that thing cannot please God. God will not take to himself what cannot please him. Now that's why there's the need to grow. Praise God. So now look at this church again too. He's telling them, I could not speak unto you as spiritual people, but as carnal people, even as babes in Christ. Okay? Verse 2. I have fed you with milk. Now, I have fed you with milk. And not with meat. And not with meat. We'll come and read it now in that same Hebrews. I have fed you with milk. And not with milk. But, but that's not so, that what he's saying. This is not supposed to be the food I'm using to feed you. But because you will not grow, I cannot use meat to feed you. You not get it. So I keep putting milk, putting milk, putting milk, and it's not helping. Okay, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. Meat. For hitherto you were not able to bear it. You are not able to bear it. Neither yet now are ye able. And neither now are ye able. Okay. For ye are yet carnal. <laughs> that, you see, are, are these people in Christ? Are these people in Christ? Are they children of God? But they are carnal. Why? They are babies. And the baby, this carnal state, cannot please God. Those for the rapture. And Enoch walked with God. And he was not. For before his translation... He had this testimony that he pleased God. No, Enoch was not a baby. <laughs> he was not a baby. He was not somebody that his stutters, his stutters concerning the understanding. Uh, Pastor was, uh, he said from there, Enoch saw the redemption plan up to the translation onto the judgment of this world that it was not only in God. But that is God and his people. Enoch saw everything. Now Enoch was not somebody that taught us. But sometimes, what the pastor preach? Uh, what, what, uh, what, what, uh, 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 uh. and we are, we are, we are walking towards pleasing God. No, it is not by coming to sweep the church. No, no, no. It's not by coming, it's not by coming to, to prophesy. It, no, no, that's not what pleases God. It is coming into a mature state. Praise God. Praise God. Okay? That's, that's, um, and please, we're verse, reading verse, yes. Verse 3. And um, verse 3 or so. Verse 3. Yes, please. For ye are yet carnal. Okay. For whereas there is among you envy and strife and division, are ye not carnal and walk as men? Now see, 
It is this carnality that causes envies, strife, divisions. You see, that's what I was saying just now. Eh, now, eh, now. Eh, eh, you, you give, you give, eh, you give this one car. Me, uncle, me, I know, I know, savvy drive. Am I not your child? Then me, I go, I strife, divisions. And he said, Are you not carnal like this? <laughs> we are coming there. <laughs> He said, and you wo- and walk as men. Okay. For why one said, now why one says, I am of Paul. I am of Paul. And another, and another, I am of Apollos. I am of Apollos. Are you not carnal? Are, are you not carnal like this? Now I said, this is where the church, the church generation is. One says, I am redeemed. This one says, I am, uh, I am mountain. This one says, I am chosen. This one says, ah, me, 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 I'm, uh, I, I, I am uh, a kilo man. Uh, are you not carnal like this? Okay. Now, sometimes too, these things are important. I said these things, God delivered us from these things. But sometimes we perceive these things even amongst our own selves. Not because we are supposed to be like this. but because we will not just give ourselves to the world. So, we bring these things into and it began continue sir please verse 5 okay who then is paul who is paul who is apollos who is apollos but ministers by whom ye believed these are ministers by whom you believed even as the lord gave to every man even as the lord gave to every man i have planted apollos. i have planted apollos apollos have watered I have planted Apollos watered. Yes. But God gave the increase. It's God that gave the increase. So then, so then, neither is he that planted now, anything. Neither is he that planted anything. Neither he that uh, watered. Uh, you, uh, you outside. No, no, it's me that started this church. Uh, it's me that started. Now, now me. It's me that started the church. Carnality. Now me start the church. Uh, you people came to meet me now. But they are pouring water. Now he's saying. Uh, neither, neither is he that is planted he that, anything neither he that watereth neither he that waters but nothing. God gave the increase it is God that gives the increase oh oh you put a seed in the ground another person comes to pour it to say they not pour water you foresee anything oh you that came to pour water to say you not meet seed you foresee anything so why do you boast yourself and you say, this one want to be on top this one want to be on top and, and it's me that it's me that yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's me that it's me that he that planted is nothing he that waters is nothing who is something is who gave the increase praise God so except you are able to plant and then give the increase unto yourself because the scripture said a man sweat a seed and he goes to sleep he said how that seed will spring forth he knows not how see it is in the prerogative of the maker Praise God. What was causing this thing? Carnality. People that just refuse to grow in the knowledge of Christ. Praise God. Okay. Verse 8. Now, sorry, sir. You hear somebody says, in the message, you hear somebody say, I have said. Now it's time for others to serve me. Are you God? What's this? This is carnality. I, I, I have served for. Well, I've, I've said for, uh, for, for, for I've said for five years now. I've said for eleven years now. I was faithful in all the uh, in, in serving in serving. Yeah? Now it is time for others to serve. <laughs> you don't turn God like this now because <laughs> we are supposed to be serving the living God. <laughs> so now that others are coming to serve you, <laughs> you don't turn God now. See, is this, this is the problem. So then, everybody wants to plant. For the glory of what? And I in church. And I in ministry. And I in, and I in. So everybody wants to be a planter. So that he will be able to, have, have you seen my church? Uh, he will be able to boost uh, that I have something. When the thing don't, when the thing don't big. <laughs> I, I brought up, I, I was, I brought up, he will be able to boost. Everybody, now, if I, everybody, it wants you just get small gifts. Pam. You don't go. Oh, God, God told me. Uh, why would God not tell you? Uh, you don't get small gifts. Pam. God told me. Uh, God told me. 
But we had 12 men anointed and full of the Holy Ghost until there was a combustion. And those 12 men were pastoring one church. Who is it that planted? Who is it that watered? It? it is God that gave it the increase. Praise God. Please, sir. Verse 8. Now he that planted and he that watereth are okay. one. Okay. And every man shall receive his own reward. Everyone shall receive his own reward. According to his own labor. According to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Some people that water might receive more than some people that plant. Some people that plant might receive more than some people that water. Watered. Every man shall receive his own reward according to his labor. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's not a, 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 a mister. What are you doing? What is the labor? Uh -uh. Okay, sir. Verse 9 again. For we are laborers together with God. Now, we are laborers together with God. With God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are not. Ye are God's husbandry. Now, take note. We will come to it later. Ye are God's husbandry. husbandry. Ye are God's building. Ye are God's building. Thank you, sir. Let's go back to our Hebrews where we are reading. Ye are God's husbandry. Husbandry is a, is a plant, a plantation. That's a planting, garden. Yes. You know, uh, uh, you say you, you can have animal husbandry, but there's also, it's a, so it's, it's a garden, a farm. Ye are God's farm. The, what am I, I did, this is understanding the serpent seed. This is the introduction. Ye are God's husbandry. We will come to it later. Um, Hebrews, where we are reading? Hebrews. Yes, sir. Chapter 5, verse yes, 12 we're now. Chapter 5, we stopped at... Um, verse 11. Verse 11, yes. Verse 12. Verse 12 now. For when the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again. Okay. Which be the first principles of the oracles of God. Which be the first principles of the oracles of God. And I become such as have need of milk. And I become such as have need of milk. And not of strong meat. And not of strong meat. For everyone that uses meat, milk, is unskillful in the word of righteousness. Now, the person that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. Righteousness is by the word. That's by faith. It's unskillful in the word of righteousness. The person that uses milk. Understand it like this. Isaiah 28 verse 9, I'll quote. Whom shall I teach knowledge? Whom shall I make to understand doctrine? He that is weaned from the meek. They don't come out from... Now, this is God. God wants to teach. But who will I teach? Who can I make to understand this thing that I... Who... You know... It's... <laughs> <laughs> who will I be able to tell this thing? And the person will not say, eh? <laughs> who will I do? Who? He said, them that are weaned from the milk. To win a child from the milk, you can understand that. Uh, is to, uh, Isaac was weaned at how many years? 13. Uh, about 13 years. You can go and read it in the uh, 12. The 12 uh, 13, so. that, that's, he said, that's the winning. There. In Israel, they actually had a winning ceremony. They will do the winning ceremony and all that. So, it's not small baby now. So, the person don't grow rich on stage. Then they win the child. Now, it is those ones that have been weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Not looking for uh, uh, breast every time. Breast, cry, cry, baby, milk, milk, milk. It's not coming. It's not I come to church. I, I, I rain fair. That's why I did not come to church. Uh, and sun did not shine well. That's why I did not come to church. And my, and my left leg pain me. Uh, my, my right eye was not bright in the morning. <laughs> Is this who God wants to teach? <laughs> I, I was tired. <laughs> when God wants to teach, no. It's them that are weaned from the milk. They don't pass that stage. Praise God. You see, uh, uh, these things is what... Uh, if you are not in the fire, uh, the Holy Ghost baptism, this thing, endeavor to get the teachings. The teachings. Oh. Okay. Please, sir. 
Verse 13 again. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. Yes. For he is a babe. But strong meat belongs to them that are of full age. Now, strong meat belongs to them that are perfect. Yes, sir. Strong meat belongs to them that are mature. Now, uh, okay. Even those who by reason of use. Even those who by reason of use. That is, not he that uses milk is unskillful. Now, those who by reason of use of strong meat. That is, those who use strong meat. Even those who by reason of use. Have their sense, have, have their senses exercised. Have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. To discern both good and evil. Now, those that use strong meat to discern good and evil, not those that use milk to discern. So, some people are just in church. What is it about? They are using milk to discern. But there are those we are talking about. We are in, trying to introduce the serpent seed because there was something that was happening, and then. There was the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, they couldn't, have, they couldn't have understood it like that. But they needed to have something that would cause them exercise to discern. Now, the woman didn't come to that point. But they were supposed to be able to use strong meat to discern. This is the tree of... This is this. This is this. But where is the church world today? We are still in milk. And I said, by God's grace, it is from there that God delivered us. But he did not deliver us to come and continue in milk. He delivered us. He was, he was drawing us out of the breast. He was winning us from the milk. But we come here and we are still needing milk again. Uh -uh. Praise God. Uh, what were you doing there since? Uh, we, we use milk to try to interpret things. Uh, praise God. It is against this background our text comes in now. Therefore, because this is what it is supposed to be. That strong meat belongs to them that are mature. And then, now you ought to have been mature. Uh, and you ought to have been using meat to discern. Therefore, living, living principles the principles of the doctrine of Christ. Of the saints, of the oracles, of the doctrines of Christ. Let us go on to perfection. Let us go on now to perfection. You see, it was pushing a case for maturity. Let us now go on to maturity. May we, may we start to talk something. Praise God. Hallelujah. The doctrine of the serpent seed is one of the strong myths of the Bible. Okay. Uh, let us go on to perfection. Leaving the principles. Now he's saying Drop the principles. Leave that one. You don't do. Leave them. Leave the principles of the doctrine of Christ. Uh -huh. Let us go on to perfection. <laughs> okay. Now, please sir, continue. Not laying again the foundation of repentance. He's, now, watch. He's going to list some principles now. He's going to list some of these principles. When we list them and finish, gather them, remove them from the church. Tell me what the church we should preach. Okay, please, sir. Not, Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. One, repentance. Repent! Repent! He said, leave that one. Are you hearing? Mm. Leave that one. Repent from fornication. Repent from stealing. It's not good to steal, oh. If you go and use that to open market, God will judge you. If you go and use, leave that one. By reason of timing, the age has entered the bracket of meat. Justification, sanctification, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He said, things, I have things to tell you, but I cannot tell you now. He said, but when the Spirit comes, he said, he shall put in your remembrance what I have told you. He said, then he shall lead you into all truth. So, by reason of the age, when we enter the age, we left the season of milk. But the church is still doing milk. Now, he said, not laying again the foundation uh, the foundation uh, of repentance, uh, repentance from, dead, from works. dead works. Now, sometimes people come in here and they expect to hear us uh, uh, using milk again. It's, leave that one first. I don't know, maybe our, our evangelist, I know I want to talk to, but now we are talking to sons. 
Praise God. Amen. We are talking to sons. Uh, I don't know how they want to talk to those ones. Now they take mix the meat and the meat. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but now we are talking to sons. Now I say, leaving the principles of repentance from, from dead, dead works. works. Uh-huh. And of faith toward God. And of faith toward God. Eh, believe God now. Nah, God can do it. Eh, God has not done it for me since. Eh, God, me, me since. I don't suffer. <laughs> It's not what to come and be telling. Uh, see, it's not what to come and be telling. Uh, God, God is powerful. God can do it. God will do it. God, just have faith in God. Yeah? Have faith in God. What, what, what did they do since? Uh, oh, are you telling here? <laughs> if you not believe God, are you telling here? Yeah? Now, he's counting it to repentance from dead works. Uh, what, uh, and on faith toward God. Faith toward God. They be counting now too, okay? Of the doctrine of baptisms. Of the doctrine of baptisms. Oh, so come here sometimes and we are saying repent and be baptized in Jesus. It's principle. That is principle. Sometimes it be like said the end time messages. He wants to repent, be baptized in Jesus' name. You are, you are not an end time message. You are nothing. Principle. This one fall under. I shall bring to remembrance a principle. And of the doctrine of baptisms, there are two. It's always two. The children of Israel said they were baptized unto Moses in the water and in the cloud. What's in the cloud? Is the spirit. So they were baptized in the water and in the cloud unto that prophet, Moses. Who we are baptized in the water and in the cloud unto Christ, the prophet. Is the spirit. So they were baptized with water and says two baptisms. Who we are baptized to water and spirit, two baptisms. Uh, receive the Holy Ghost is principles. That's what he's saying. Say, leave that one first. This is not the end of the church. It's like if it's like if I can just beg you to receive Holy Spirit, I don't do something. He said that one is principle. He says, he's counting the things that we should leave. Huh? He said, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. So, baptism of the Holy Ghost, baptism of water is principle. So, just so you will know, uh-huh. so that. These are these things are the foundation. These things they are, they are down, they are down, they are, they are down, they are down. This was this is what babies drink. Uh-huh. Now, but okay. And of laying on of hands. And on laying on of hands. Uh, for healing, for miracle, for whatsoever. Uh, doctrines of laying on of hands. Now that one two principles. And of resurrection of the dead. Now, now, uh, Pastor Dan was saying those for the rapture, the reference is the living sense, not the dead sense. And there will be a resurrection one day. Eh, man, man, shall rise. Principles. <laughs> Principles. <laughs> resurrection of the dead. Principles. Okay. And of eternal judgment. And of eternal judgment. God will judge this world. God will judge it like this. Principles. Now, uh, that's Yes, sir. Okay. And this we will do if God permits. Now, see these things. I said, I said. <laughs> you see, if we remove these things, you see these things are listed. If you carry and come out from the church world, what would they preach? Wait, 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 they preach for church? <laughs> <laughs> what would they preach now again? Oh, uh, 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 Holy Ghost. Okay, you don't talk now. We don't receive Holy Ghost. Okay. Without ba- oh, okay, I don't baptize. Okay. Uh, uh, repent. Well, I don't repent since. Okay. Uh, judgment. <laughs> wow, I know they do bad things. Okay. Uh, uh, wait again. Uh, uh, they say, uh, he, uh, they know, uh, I'm not sick. Uh, okay. Uh-huh. What again? Resurrection of the day. Yeah, of course. I did. Okay. Uh, so pastor said somebody came to preach uh, so, and said, came to tell him to receive. I've, I've given my life to Christ. Okay. So what next? Talk about that one. Then the man hook now. He come. Uh, okay now. <laughs> now, when you remo- gather all these things that you remove them from the atmosphere of the church, it is finished. So, when as it were, they have now and now the way the church fell, the denomination has fell, the way they fell, they fell up to the point where these principles is even difficult for them to understand. 
Baptism, the person is fighting over. Wait, hey, baptism is in Jesus. It's a well, Baptism is a spring clean. It's, it's, it's not, baptism is like that. Three times. It's, 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 it's still uh, the principles. It's still the heart. Uh, uh, resurrection of the dead. Uh, uh, judgment. Faith towards God. These things, they're still the heart. But on the norm, these ones, they're supposed to take this one. Now, when they would have finished this one and they now find out that nothing remains, the next thing is prosperity gospel. The next thing is riches. The next thing is, I heard those, um, uh, uh, what do they call that talk? Uh, motivational speaking. Don't be, uh, 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 marriage seminar, singles. Uh, uh, next thing now. <laughs> we go to your talk again. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. So, now, but when we are done with these ones, when we are done with these things, now we enter, you know, he's saying, leaving these ones, let us go on to perfection. So there are things, plenty, there are things now that are meant for the perfect, for the mature. And it is uh, one of those things is what we are trying to bring up now, the doctrine of the serpent seed, understanding the serpent seed. Now, um, please, Isaiah chapter 5, 1 to 2. Now, the understanding we have sometimes is like the serpent seed just came, the, the, the revelation of the serpent seed just came to let us know that Now will I sing to my well beloved. Now will I sing to my well beloved. Yes. And he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof. He gathered out the stones and planted it with the choicest vine. And planted it with choicest vine. And built a tower in the midst of it. And built a tower in the midst of it.
it the same thing? Now, all these things that we are running old testament to new testament is the garden of god that god planted genesis chapter 2 please is the garden of god that was planted by god now this thing is what is the imagery in 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 this genesis genesis chapter 2 8 and 15 genesis chapter 2 Yes, sir. Verse 8. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward now, in Eden. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. It is what he planted. It, 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 now, th this is how it started. He planted a garden. Now we are in Genesis now. This is concerning now the serpent seed. That's why I, I, it's understanding the serpent seed. He's talking about the garden of God and what is playing out inside it. Okay? He planted a garden. garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. And there he put the man whom he had formed. Verse 15. Verse 15. And the Lord God took the man. And the Lord God took the man. And put him into the garden of Eden. And put him into the garden. To dress it. Like he took us. From wherever we were. He took people. And put us into the vineyard that he has planted. Okay. He put the man. Into the garden of Eden. Into the garden of Eden. To dress it. Kai, see, you cannot be a Christian and be swinging up and down the whole field. Flying up and down. No, he puts, he always puts the man in a place to dress. You cannot be flying up and down. Yeah, fiam, yeah, fiam, fiam. Yeah, you. Yeah, you, yeah, you like, now, devil, nine down, be down, to and fro. No, he puts the man in a place to do something there. He said, be dressing it. The same thing he told those men. He put them there. He said, he said, keep it till I come. He went to a far country. He, he's, oh, he's about his garden. Praise God. Amen. Okay. To dress it and to keep it. To dress it and to keep it. Thank you, sir. So, this is just an introduction to this subject. Understanding the serpent seed. So that when we get to the point where he began to say, in the middle of the garden, there was the tree of life. You understand why Christ had to come in the middle. Old Testament ran, New Testament here, but Christ was in the middle. You understand the, the figure in the book of Revelation, in the midst of the candlestick. It's, it's, it's about his garden. But he was using this now that played out physical. He was using it to play out what was going to happen in his garden. That in his garden, there are certain things that, in his garden, there was the tree of life. In his garden, there was the tree of knowledge. Inside his garden. This one is not outside. We are talking about the church. It is understanding the serpent seed. Now, how the devil has children in the church? In the garden. So, this is not much about Cain. Cain don't do his own pass. It's not much about the physical lineage. Now, that was the physical. But now, we are talking about the spiritual lineage. That's what this subject is addressing. Praise God. How that we will be able to overcome and eat of the tree of life. Revelation chapter 22, 14 to 15. Let's round off with that. Revelation chapter 22. Revelation 22 from verse 14. 14 to 15. Yes, please. 
Blessed are they that do these commandments. Blessed are they that do his commandments. That they may have right to the tree of life. That they may have right to the tree of life. And may enter in through the gate into the city. And may enter in through the gate into the city. For without our dogs. For without our dogs. And sorcerers. And sorcerers. And whomongers. Wh- wh- and whomongers. And murderers. And murderers. And idolaters. And idolaters. And whosoever loveth and, and make it. Whosoever loveth a lie. And whosoever maketh a lie, blessed be the name. Of, <laughs> blessed be the name of the Lord. These are without the garden. So there are certain people that will be put without. They'll be driven out. They will not be able to partake of the tree of life. This is introducing the doctrine of the serpent seed. Understanding the serpent seed. This is the introduction class. The Lord will help us. We will continue from here next week in Jesus Christ's name. The Lord will also help us to come.